Brother. Hi. Hi. Lord of the sky beats Lord of the underworld. <laughs> fire and sky. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. So how's it up there? Mm. How are the humans doing? The air is a bit thin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little cold, but I can see your house from up here. <laughs> 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 well, let me, let me give me a sec here. I just want to grab tubes. <coughs> I keep you in the back roads and the rivers of my memory, ever smiling, ever gentle on my mind. <laughs> what a great song. Is that uh, Campbell? Yeah, it was. Glenn Campbell, right you are. Just like the real premier back in the day. <laughs> Mr. Drunk Driver. Well, that was Gordon Campbell, never mind. Oh, yeah. wonder what you're talking about. So how goes the, the business climb to the top? The rat race and... <laughs> Learning lots. <coughs> this week was basically all about <coughs> knowing who you are, what your core values are, and your all that kind of stuff, and what your plan is, and what you know what you want to do, and stuff that's changed from when you first took the course to now, and all this kind of jazz. A lot of listening to fucking. I don't know how to say this nicely. <sighs> A lot, listening to a lot of people who don't often get a chance to be heard, <laughs> who uh, are more than happy to make the most out of that opportunity. And so um, there was a lot of that. And uh, outside of that, you know, it feels like progress is slowly being made now. I've had two people, Tom Child from the, the Song Yee's guy, who represents the program. And one of the students who's the cousin of the same person have recommended that I that they're going to help me get a hold of this Songi's development person, business CEO, Songi's business development, whatever. Uh huh. We're supposed to have fucking sit down and uh, apparently Songi's just put a whole bunch of money aside for like business development on the res and all this kind of stuff. And there's like some really big opportunities, including Malahad and things like you had mentioned. And uh, so I, I just got this feeling that something's going to go on here. And I, I kind of was like streamlining today my ideas about how to prevent this from getting out of my hands. Do you know what I'm saying? How to prevent this from becoming corrupted and becoming a, a venture capital kind of thing for, for big wigs and greedy people. And so my thing was the board of directors is chosen by the people whom the product is for, basically the fucking people decide who sits on the board. And then the people, not the board, decides what their adequate compensation would be and so forth, right? And the, they don't decide for themselves what the fuck you get paid and shit. The people decide based on what you're doing and, and exactly that. That the overall ideal here is not for me to get caught. I was just thinking this before you called me. Is I don't want to get caught up in just mother's hands that's just one thing i want to get it going get it rolling have someone who understands the core philosophy that will continue the momentum and i can move on into other into other ventures these other ideas that i have and, and stuff like that you know what i mean right start continually always growing always expanding and then kind of like finding the right person to leave that project with will i i go pursue the other ones i want to do you know and uh yeah, I don't know. I feel weird talking to some people. Sometimes I still don't know what to fucking say anymore. <laughs> what are you talking about me? In general, just people. I have a. I, I oftentimes feel like I just talk too much and nobody. Uh, I should just learn to shut the fuck up, but I just can't seem to do that. <laughs> right on. Well, I guess it's kind of like uh, the 
telling the Blue Jay not to talk. I had an interesting experience yesterday I wanted, I wanted to share with you. <laughs> Without going into details, that would belie the trust placed in me. <laughs> I know a few beautiful angelic pe people. Their vibration is just super clean and high. And they're just that kind of people, not the fake ones and the wannabe ones, but the real ones. And you know who I'm talking about, like certain people. <laughs> but I always believe in that Taoist concept of within the light, there's dark, with the dark, there's light. And my favorite kind of angels are the ones who are honest about their darkness, who wear it on their sleeve. They don't try to hide it because when you try to hide it, I know it's there and I will find it. Everyone has it. You know what I'm saying? And, and a certain individual that I kind of held up as a, you know, in a fairly angelic way, but always had this bad taste in my throat, this bad feeling, this instinct told me there's something underneath it that's, you know, that, that uh, tells another story, you know, kind of thing. So yesterday, the, uh, having a, spending some time with this individual and in the process of me explaining kind of like, you know, the getting rid of the rolling thunder stuff and the you know, training and all that kind of stuff, this individual decided that they were going to share their thing with me. And uh, it, had, it was a based on a long occurring and deeply rooted deception from very important people in this person's life. And once they explained the overall situation in the way that this deception had been poisoning the group that this person and the other person the other person concerned were in you know i could see this long rooted thing and uh, i could see how this one thing had been painting and tainting every other aspect of this person's life everything they were trying to do that had so much potential was it's just like trying to spin a car in summer tires on the ice do you know what i mean and it was it was this deception that prevented traction now that the deception was out it was kind of like this thing yesterday like i cannot explain to you what it's like to channel to an angel i cannot explain to you what it's like to heal an angel or how do i put this school an angel mm. when in with 100% righteousness and no hypocrisy or fakeness. Then on this one issue, James is a fucking expert, having spent an entire lifetime learning every single part about fucking temperance, you know, about truth and all that kind of stuff to be able to speak on this kind of thing. Anyways, um, I gave this person, like it was like a path to liberation. At the best and immediate way, uh, the best way to, to, to get to the, the place you want to get with the courage and facing your fear and all this kind of stuff was to expose this deception, pull the arrow out, acknowledge the damage done and begin the healing. That can't be put off, I, I, I explained. It just can't be. It has to be done now. The sooner the better. It's already been going on for two years. Don't kid yourself into thinking two weeks won't matter or whatever. And this person's justification for not doing the truth was grounded in their, the, the, this weird justification that I just could not accept. I could not wrap my head around it. Just no, man. Just, you know, I, I, I even used all these analogies. I even reached out to this person on a level that I don't normally do with people and in a way that I knew they would identify with. And I use their kind of religious perspective and quotes from their, their religious text to kind of like hammer home the points. It seemed to really affect them, but it also kind of like I could tell today when I kind of just tested the water to see how they're doing. I could tell they didn't do it. And instead, they went to the rationality of, of, of continuing the deception. And this really affects how I see this person now. You know what I'm saying? It really does because it's tainting everything. I can't trust anything now. One deception, a known deception that is that is enduring, is is it, it just creates a lack of credibility in that person's character. You know? Could I add something? That something it just comes in a little bit because I I think I understand what you're talking about, but it just seems 
there's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. There's a spectrum of context. And, you know, I have no idea what the context or anything or what you're relating to, right? So I'm I'm just kind of speaking more from a general point of view of, of, uh, just because someone can't be trusted in this area doesn't mean they can't be trusted in another area kind of thing. Yeah, I know. I'm not generalizing, but, but deception (laughs) in one area would, would allow deception in other areas. Right. So, I mean, basically it's it's like, if I don't know, I, I, I don't know why, why that came in because I think anytime I've had a real strong viewpoint on somebody, Mm -hmm. it sort of, it then begins the downward spiral of, of judgment and seeing that person, uh, in a certain way right and i don't know like like just i think i had a huge lesson i i mean i've had some massive lessons since i've seen you and one was the sharing of a friend's core wound around how she feels she has to she just feels she has to judge everybody and whatever somebody's doing there's a judgment of something if something's wrong then it's a very strong wrong mm-hmm. that's what she has inside her she was criticized growing up continually and, <laughs> but it was just it was like this like a thunderbolt just about judgment in general mm-hmm. and but i do understand i mean from the extent of like if something crosses our line of what we consider either be integrity or you know you're giving feedback that's you know good feedback and coming i think from a place of your medicine mm-hmm. And if someone doesn't, you know, if you're with people, you're, you're, you, I think what you are is, is you're walking with people on the path. You're mm-hmm. walking with other people who are sort of, I think, attempting to attain their highest spiritual evolution. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how I read you. Mm-hmm. And the reason, you know, as you say, you can't hang out with people much is because you don't stray from that. And if you're going to hang around you, you have a sort of field of expectation Mm -hmm. type of people you want to hang with meaning you'll take that from them if they see us cracking your arm or you're doing something which they feel is either unethical or ungood or not you know in some way Mm -hmm. i think you'd be open to hearing it right because you have gone through that already you've you've worked on that part of yourself and now you're around someone you know who hasn't has this big piece and you're going deal with it but the timing, like it, maybe you're pushing a little too fast. Like, yeah, I think that's maybe, exactly what it was. Yeah. It may be two weeks, but it may be something. Sometimes these things have to sink in, and it takes six months or maybe a year. It, it's the type of deception where we're, we're speaking on a betrayal of trust to someone extremely close to this person, and the long two weeks. You know, I, I, it's perhaps, and then you're right. I do. I think I pushed so hard because I think this person could handle it, needed it. But then when I started, I don't know if you can relate, but sometimes when you really open up the channel and you're coming, like I'm just, you know, I was, I can't tell you how I was shiny, but it was like this crystal light shining through me to this person that that, like a crystal that has no lines in it and things it was like a laser transmission and uh i could tell the effect and everything but they're they're i almost feel like it was a situation where they're sticking stubbornly to this reason for whatever their reason was even though they knew it was wrong you know what I mean? But they chose because they have their way, therefore they're right, therefore they're going to continue. And no matter what medicine you would do, it's like when someone you're trying to heal someone's sore muscle and all you need them to do is just stop holding up their shoulder and you can get at that part, but they will not let go of that fucking shoulder and you cannot get under the in there to get the thing. Yeah. So you can't really do much except sue the outsider or, or whatever the case is. And that's kind of what it was. And it was frustrating because I just want this person to have a, that breakthrough. 
but they're also young. They're also figuring shit out. I understand all that. And people have to come to truth in their own ways. You know, you can't force truth. And I think that was my lesson from yesterday. Yeah. I can't force people to, my truth to become other people's truth, which is stupid as that might sound that I wouldn't know that already, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. The iteration, I guess. I mean, I guess also the person came up, like, are they a student or a teacher sort of thing? Uh, yeah, a student peer. And, and are they a student by agreement or by level? By agreement. Growth, okay. So this is someone specific to who's learning from you. Yeah, well, learning with me, I guess. They're, they've they got their own thing going on that's kind of high level and whatnot, but... Uh... I... When you deal with somebody who's hiding something, it taints the deal. When you do business and you're hiding something in your, your moral character, you're hiding something, a good business a, a person will pick that up and they will cast, they cast a shadow of doubt over everything. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to prevent someone from going through that because that's what I've experienced. Now I understand where I was getting that from is exactly this thing. And it wouldn't be once they cleared it with me. I knew we were clear. We were good. You did it with me. You can do it with others. Do you know what I'm saying? But now I didn't. I didn't see them the same way after. Not, not in a bad, but in a good way. Now I don't mistrust them. Now I trust you because you trusted me to share this with me and all that. But I mistrust you because you're still not. You're willing to. Can I? I told him, it's like you. You and your friends are sitting around a well, and you're putting drops of poison in the well and everyone's drinking from the well do you know what i'm saying yeah because I mean, it's a it's a it's a lie to a group of friends that it's shared by them that none of them know because they all feel it's a, a, a legit thing when in fact is it well i think again we really don't know best timing and maybe yeah. a few things have to happen on full in order for something to happen like that like uh I yeah. think what you did is you opened the door and now he has to make the conscious choice to go through. Now, what you can do is you can go, look, because of this, I'm not going to hang with you anymore until you do this. And that would be, you know, probably something I would do. I mean, it's hard to say, right? It depends on fluidity. It, it depends upon, You know, if he's used to getting whacked, right? What people are is they have a lot of fear about the big whack. Mm -hmm. So if you whack him, it's kind of like if you show love or you show like forgiveness where they expect to be sort of punished. Mm -hmm. And knowing that he knows, you know, you know that he knows all that sort of stuff. And that, that'll change also. He'll notice your bearing with him will be different kind of thing. Like it's just, as you say, it's, it's, a, it's a major thing and i mean to get through it is a is the bigger thing i think because yeah i guess that's true but again sort of like there's no like what's the rush like i mean i understand from the context you're giving me that you know the longer it goes let's say whether the worse it gets or it's just how could it continue if now i told you this kind of thing mm -hmm. but it you know Again, like I'm just, cause I, I probably, I don't think I do this one quite so much. I mean, I, my thing is more linked to me. <laughs> like if someone does something to me, yeah. now that's different. If they're doing it to somebody else and they're confiding in me, um, I would give the feedback probably going, you know, it's not a good idea, you know, not a good idea or something. And then it, in some way, I don't want it to be part of my business. I mean, everyone out there has shadow work. Everyone out there has a load of shit. That yeah, and, that, and that's just a, a good point right there. Shadow work. And, and and even angels have shadow work. And that was kind of the whole initiating thought on it all was, you know, I, I kind of like see that. And I never have before. You know, I've always, those angelic people either had done their work ahead of time or do their work privately. I never had, I've never been a part of or seen it before. And, uh, you know, it, it, of course I've seen the exact opposite too, you know, truly evil, dark, twisted people doing 
really, really supreme acts of kindness out of the blue. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> it's funny. Like in the Gene Keys, dishonesty is the shadow, intimacy is the gift, and transparency is the sinhu. And so, to me, like what this book did, and I, I, if you don't have it, I would definitely get it. Like mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a Bible type book. Mm -hmm. And it just has 64 shadow elements. And then each one of them has a gift and a sidhi. So mm -hmm. the shadow is pointing to the gift and the gift is, is pointing to the city. They're all linked to the same thing, but one's the distortion, one's the, the, the shadow, whatever element. So is it a lot of it based on Jungian type of philosophy kind of thing? No, well, it's more based upon the the I Ching at the background, they all have hexagrams. Right. And we got a sort of like a download of it. It's, it's kind of like new knowledge in a sense. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, a, That's it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's yeah. A great read. And it could be again, yeah. like this could be a way. If, you, if I'm going to deal with someone in shadow work now, this is the Bible. It's, right. I'll have to check it out. Where would I get it? Uh, any kind of, I don't know, New Age bookstore, like any of the bookstores that are more like the, um, you could order it, you know, if you go to the, probably the big store center, it's called the Gene Keys by Richard Wright. Yeah. I'll look it up at, uh, when I'm downtown next and see if I can't find some. Yeah. How much it would be? It's maybe 30 bucks. Like, yeah, it's a great deal. 30, 20, $28, like, I don't know how they do that, $28. I have a thing, right? It's I think it's because I have been through so much stuff in my life that I demand a certain thing from me that I have to walk my talk, that I have to be doing this kind of stuff and uh, this work on self and have done. And I meet friends that are on a similar path and kind of like I expect their code to be very much similar to mine. So I'm always really disappointed when, when people kind of fall off the, the way and go backwards kind of thing into stuff. And, you know, I love them and I want to help them. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, perhaps a little impatient and, uh, you know, lacking in, 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 especially with men, I get a little hard with guys. I don't like coddling guys. Like I don't like, you know what I mean? I have no problem carrying a sick brother. I will do that any day, any time. But I don't like enabling or making excuses or, or supporting someone's poor excuses for lack of action in a certain area. I don't think that does each other as warriors any good. And so, yeah, sometimes with friends, if, if certain stuff comes up and they're not willing to kind of like work on it, or acknowledge it or take responsibility for it, then yeah, I can be a little distant and cold. But most of my friends are the kind of guys who once you, you know, they see it or they, you, you call them on it or they call themselves on it or take responsibility for it, they usually try some kind of something to work on that thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I know this person is going to do it. I'm just kind of like, I think it's more of my issue because I'm just kind of disappointed in, in their not seeing it as a thing that was important enough to do immediately, but rather continue with their justification, whatever it was. So I just kind of like needed to verbalize that, I guess, with you, I guess. I mean, I, I would think to attain peace of mind, one would need detachment with most interactions with most humans, mm -hmm. especially students or especially people that, you know, again, as you have more of them around you, at least what I find, you know, a lot of people, they don't consider themselves students. And a lot of people, they're not, you know, I don't know how you are with people, right? But I, like, I just had, <laughs> I had, uh, I don't know, like someone, someone who's closest in the hospital right now. Oh, wow. And he, I watched him on live video sort of go down the hill and I sort of was by his side not quite there but in you know in the background for like a year I've been working with him and and now it's 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 very clear that 
you know, he needs medical attention or he, I mean, there's, there's just no answer there. And the only answer is medical attention and giving him medication. That's what the people are prescribing. Yeah. And, you know, the main thing is no one knows what to do with them in a sense. Yeah. And the, and while everyone loves people, you know, the more like he's looking to be unsafe, he's looking to, you know, his reality, his reality is not configured to this reality anymore. Yeah, yeah. But I took a part in it. Associative disorder kind of thing? I don't know. I mean, maybe me. Like, I, I don't know. I, didn't, I wouldn't put, w- want to put a word on it, but it's like, it was so, like, a b- big part of his mania is mapping systems. Okay. Like media systems. So... <laughs> Not the same as mine, but his own set of systems, which, you know, are some of the most sophisticated things I've seen. Like this guy is very intelligent. But the connection point with reality and being with people and how he's seen and uh, how he acts has been sort of deteriorating over the last six months, in my opinion. And you know, so I mean, I like sometimes you use a strong hammer, and sometimes you're just giving feedback, and sometimes like it's a uh, there's a lot to a person, like other than that one thing, you know. There's a lot of other things going on. Yeah, that's the thing, right? I knew a guy like that out here in Victoria. I think his name was Bruce. And he was always at at rallies and protests and shit, but he always had this like wellspring of information when it came to surveillance and the type of ways that the the system uses and kind of like knowledge of like, I think he had been in the military at one time. He just had this knowledge of things that it's really uncommon to find. And when I first met him, he seemed fairly rational, if not a little kind of like timid. But then over the years at protests and rallies and things, I'd see him and he was, he was starting to slide into paranoia, right? And uh, for good seeing what that was and, and how it manifested in him, who was obsessed with surveillance and this, that, and the other thing. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of sad to watch the process of that go on and, and the ramifications of, of what came out of that. You know what I mean? Like when you get to a certain state of that. And then I think to myself sometimes that this is weird to say, but what if they're right? And the and the conditioning is so bad in society that they're made to feel like they're insane or made to be pushed away or whatever, so that they don't influence the others. But what if they actually are seeing some of the shit they're seeing? And we're the ones who are inhibited from seeing things. But they had something that broke through because in my culture, we didn't have crazy fucking people. They were usually visionaries or singers or dreamers or this or that. It was very rare that someone was completely fucking gonzo bonzo and of no use at all. And I think that's one thing in a lot of our mental health system is we don't give people a feeling of connection and usefulness. You're just stuck in your head with these weird thoughts of aliens, you know, bugging your computer and this, that and the other thing. But, you know, I've seen it, even my own little sister, you know, the lack of mental health support and the fact that they put you in an institution and it boots you, oh, you're on your fucking own. Lack of support of any kind. And then the family, friends, and society on the whole, we don't know what to fucking do. And we see some guy having a fucking serious argument and fisticuffs with a fucking tree about aliens and George Bush and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know how to help, so we call. You know what I mean? And, and there's just this nasty cycle. And I think you and I have both been affected by that with people we've known, you know? It's a sad thing. It's okay. funny because most of these people when they were alive were put in institutions. And then someday a nurse would be, you know, they died or something and the nurse would be cleaning their stuff and read their journal. And it was some of the most beautiful writing of the most co- profound con- philosophical concepts that became canon in our education system years later but when they were alive you couldn't get one person to fucking listen to 
it was yammering of a, of a madman, don't listen to him. And then you get that desperation for someone to want to listen to hear you. Like, I fucking get it, man. I get it. You know what I mean? I, I literally feel like I'm a fucking special needs person and my friends just humor. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> everyone's just humoring me that I'm really a fucking nut bag and, you know, days away from being, you know, I'm strapped to a bed kind of thing. Well, I think it's the, the shared meaning. And if people aren't sort of on the wavelength and they're not, you know, I mean, the society really has a lot of different segments of, of thinking out there now, but most of it, you know, seems pretty limited. And so if you're, if you're a thinker, or if you're a knower, if you're a medicine carrier or a messenger, whatever, whatever it is that where you're given downloads and you see things, uh, you know, normal society is, it's, it's so fucked. <laughs> mm -hmm. And people like, I mean, they're way worse than I even imagined. I, I just couldn't, like I had a teacher who just said, you know, you people are a lot dumber than, you know, or you give them credence for, you know, they're just not that intelligent. And, I, you know, I find the people I meet and I talk with, they're intelligent. Like most humans I come across seem to me like when you really get down to it, they're intelligent. But when you look at the masses or you look at, you know, perhaps places I never go or would never talk to people. Mm -hmm. It's like if I watch the news or when I'm watching certain things, it's just like if there's a baseline, like the people, there are not a lot of people that are jumping up and, and giving you know, the type of insight that I'm used to from my friends and people that I know. You know what I mean? Sorry. You know, have you, and I'm just going to say really stupid. Have you met ever a genuinely stupid person? Oh, <sighs> could have been inbreeding poor genetics whatever the fuck they were just generally not 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 special needs just fucking stupid without sounding negative or judgment just so well, i wouldn't say like a lot kind of thing uh i guess you know i'm being pretty harsh in terms of like i seem to assess the collective in, a, in the form of intelligence looking at the collective actions and looking at how people go along with things but when it comes down to an individual, when you're really talking with them, you know, they're very intelligent about the things they're interested in. Yeah, that's true. And they're yeah. intelligent about what they focus on and they all have, you know, somewhere in there, like they're freaking amazing at something, right? And yeah. it just takes the time to, to do it. But it's just, I guess for me, I just have such a low opinion of our species as a whole because of what's occurring right now and what we've been doing to the planet and all that sort of thing you know and i just say that from my perspective you are a hell of a lot more positive than i am you know like you seem to have a, even though you've been through everything you are you seem to still have some way of, of kind of returning to a more positive perspective or more balanced empathetic approach well generally having had my exposure and the things i've been through i'm generally uh, humanity is a big fucking write-off for me and i have almost an inability to fucking you know empathize and understand and and, and stuff when it comes to certain things with people and humans just try as i may you know <laughs> but i think you you deal from reality and i deal from theory so I'm not, most of my positivity is more from, an, uh, from coming from an, seeing an idea, seeing how it can be done, working that stuff out. And it's taken me a long time to really figure out that, I, you know, I'm not really touching reality much because um, I don't want to, because yeah. I, I, I'm like you, I'm like, <laughs> fuck this. I, I cannot participate as this is set up here. Like this is this is way too off. Like if you're looking big picture kind of stuff, like it's like a warrior and, and these people have taken over your village and they're just fleecing everybody and everyone's going along with it. And you're going, this is fucked, man. I mean, this has to change, but nobody's, you, you can't get anyone's, anyone's uh, help from anybody because they're just, what are you talking about? Imagine what I'm doing, Elijah. 
is the exact thing you're saying. I'm going to a bunch of greedy First Nations people, because I'm going to be honest with you, this capitalistic colonialism has turned even Native people, largely consumer-driven, greedy people. And I'm going to try to propose a thing that doesn't emphasize profit, but emphasizes feeding kids. People will support it, but they'll try changing it and try to get it so that, hey, we got to, you know, we got to make money too, or whatever the fuck their justifications are. And that's, I'm going to, you know, I'm worried that my idea is going to end up getting tainted that way because of it, right? And um, I've seen, you know, just because I've been in enough Native politics and Indian politics and shit, you know, the jealousy, the fucking frog in the pail thing, like all that kind of stuff. It's a whole other fucking arena. And I'm trying to do something that's not, it's not being done. It could be done better, you know, by us. No one's doing it. And, and today I, I told Buddy, I have a private Zoom meeting with him Wednesday, but we talked after class. I said, I have this basically down to two things. A, the way I want it to be, the way we create new systems, we break that old capitalistic fucking paradigm and we do it this way on our territories. Or B, I will work with the existing fucking horseshit, but have so many checks and balances that corrupting it would be extremely fucking difficult. You know what I mean? Because I'm aware that it might not go the good the way I want it to. So what's my backup plan is I have to work with the system that is this capitalistic fucking market system. I have to work in there, but not allow my thing to get corrupted. How the fuck do you do that? You know, what came to me as you're speaking was uh, one, the ethical side of a training program that is you're actually your rolling thunder. Mm -hmm. So that where you're bringing in the real teachings of what you want, you're going to come in and get some young, young people and train them, mm -hmm. train them in, in, in the way of the, whether the warrior or the, however you want to classify. The helper is all the lawyer is the way of the helper helping the people. I mean, I'm just at the end of the day, I want to get lost in this, that, the other thing, or definitions or dictions. My company is going to feed people. That's it. Is the whole fucking modus operandi of the whole kid and caboodle. They cannot be perverted, twisted around, misunderstood, or fuck all. Especially when, and I'm being honest with you, I told you this before, I'm going to be automating this motherfucker to the yin yang. You know what I mean? To not rely on the human factor, because I know humans enough to know they'll fuck it up. If they'll steal all the food or fucking put bleach in the water and kill all the plants, it'll be fucking something. Do you know what I'm saying? Oops, I didn't know I was stoned and I you know, fucking whatever. Some guy and girlfriend will get drunk, guy will come in and start smashing my equipment because he's mad at his girlfriend. He doesn't even work in the fucking warehouse. You know what I mean? There'll be something. So if I just got most of the machines just doing their little fucking thing, I got a couple of experts who come and maintain the machines, and then I pay a local to come and fucking keep the place clean. That's the kind of the idea because that's how little fucking faith I have in humanity this is basically using technology to feed people basically is kind of how i'm looking at things utilizing the best examples of current technology in, in organic aeroponics and things and maximizing output and decreasing um what do you call that administrative entitlement and, uh, and you know whatever I, I just want money to go back into making more greenhouses and feeding people reducing the price of the food you know <clears throat> i think have you started playing with the numbers at all yet no i haven't we haven't, we haven't got there yet and i also haven't filled out those things yet I have it all in the gear i just haven't have, yet. have you done any like equipment uh lists I think that was the no, other. No, but I have looked at some companies and shit that uh, do, so it's a couple of really awesome ones in the States. I've looked at a couple of Canadian ones. I've looked at a couple of Chinese and European ones and, and just price points around those. Of course, you know, I'll, I'll do more as I go. But the idea, overall idea being that if I can get Songhees to agree to, you know, letting me use a building that's already in place that fits the dimensions of what I'm doing and land usage permit, then... I'm halfway there. The rest is getting grants, proposals, investor, investors, 
uh, to get the equipment from that company. They'll come and set it all up, get the fucking thing rolling, get, you know, their experts will show whoever's involved in the program and boom, you know, what's that? That's my book. Why are you trying to bind me? It has the... Oh, nice. Fuck yeah. Oh, shit. I was not going to be that dedicated, but I got like fucking six of them. Well, <laughs> six, like, not six oh, yeah. pages. <laughs> okay. But uh, no, like, it's like each step of the way is kind of like uh, higher levels of commitment, right, to what you're doing. And it's it's like there's like 10 levels of commitment, and maybe you're at level two right now. It may seem like you're, you're top. Yeah. No, I know I'm not. I'm, I'm <clears throat> And I'm also starting to feel a little overwhelmed that I might have bitten off more than I sh more than I could chew. That I should have taken an easier idea and got to know how to do all this shit first with an easier idea. Because by talking to people, I'm getting people excited, and now people are calling friends who have friends who have friends to try to help me. Like this guy reached out to me. He's like, "Me and you, we got to talk. Your idea is fucking it at like, noon. We'll have a, a private Zoom meeting. Me and you." Then this chick, whilst buddy talking, gets a hold of me and says, listen, my my cousin, Christina Clark, she's the fucking CEO of Songhees Business Development Corp. And da, da, da. I think you and her should sit down. And I was like, well, me and Tom just said the same thing. It's this thing that's happening. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know. Well, I mean, that's, to me, that's, as you said, it's business. It's all relationships. And, and you have to get used to that mm -hmm. and see it as a normal thing rather than something that, oh, my God, it's yeah. like you should expect these things yeah and i think that the you know essentially what i see is just like whoever controls the conversation sort of like business is about controlled conversations and so the more like whoever directs the conversation whoever is sort of like questioning to lead the conversation somewhere people will just talk <laughs> they love to talk but yeah. if, if you can master the art of because i mean i think you, you've got the verbal side down pad of expressing the vision, but it's the sort of like the other side of the coin where you are navigating with the other person to find out, you know, who they are, what they can do, what kind of agreement you can, you can reach. And, you know, how does that fit in with the plan and how can you do it as fast as possible, you know, and get to the point. And, and I know that let's say within your culture, there's much more relationship building and, and this is more of a white person going like snap, no. snap, snap. But I think from hearing from you, because everything you're going to be doing is basically one big conversation and you're going to come up with your numbers, you're going to come up with your plan, and then you're just going to talk about it, right? And the thing is, you got that part down pat, you just have to know exactly, you know, again, who to talk to, when and what to do and that kind of thing. Because you could, I think people waste a lot of time, especially when they're startups in a business. And they waste time because they haven't done it before. And you're sort of meandering rather than just like, if I'm a painting contractor, I put out the flyers, I go door to door. I, I get the contract. I, I go get the paint. I, I hire two people. I go get the contract and then I get the money, right? There's no, I'm not talking to people other than the stuff I have to do. But you're coming in with a bigger vision, but you have to watch yourself because just because you can talk about the vision doesn't mean you got the logistics down pat. And for you, yeah. You have to go to your weakness. You have to go to this. I'm not that good in, and I got to figure out the numbers. And I got like literally what we talked about today. Okay, it's called the SWOT: strengths, weaknesses, obstacles, and threats. And threats. Yeah. So we talked about that, and we each of us had to do our own assessment of that. Uh, looking at this, you know, and the stuff that I wrote down. Um, and being realistic because I like to sometimes be brutally honest about stuff and, and including and especially if the shit's coming from me do you know what I'm saying I think it's something a weakness about me or something that kind of where I'm at with that and uh, yeah it was really good it was really really good but like you're taking your pictures off eh I mean I, I there seems to be some sort of toggle where uh... no I know it's it just my camera because I don't know why but it, it just seems to switch off on its own for some reason. It doesn't do it during Zoom, but it does it with me and you, and I don't know why. Huh. Yeah, so just, yeah, the SWAT framework. So I did the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. 
things like meddling, corruption, poor management, poor research, poor networking, poor marketing. These are the kind of threats to the success of my business, right? Opportunities, it's a hot market. There's lots of investment. There's lots of opportunity in the field. There's a dire need and there's a, a opportunity for self-regulation in First Nations territory, which is a, you know, possession of the sovereignty of food is important, right? Strengths, uh, I know food from the top to the bottom, root to fruit kind of thing. A lot of my personality traits and things are, are my strengths. A lot of my abilities and my ability to organize and, and vision and visualize and, and uh, get people motivated and things like that. Um, again, one of my strengths is being dynamic and open to knowing new things and always just kind of yearning to, to learn things in the fields that I'm interested in. Weaknesses or lack of expertise. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You know, I've, as much research as I'm doing, I just, I'm, I'm not, a, you know, fourth, fourth year biology botany student whose father is a millionaire and has this awesome, and you know, idea he can sit with his engineering buddies, pay them for their time, come up with this great idea and get daddy to bankroll it. I don't have that, right? Like, so I don't know a lot of stuff in their field expertise. Um, damage reputation, you know, <clears throat> um, stubborn thick-headed and sometimes in my way of thinking or stuff like that because I know that if you let other people do your thinking for you you can go down all kinds of paths so I'm a little you know steadfast in in making sure that I'm maintaining my perspective on things lack of motivation in times because you know sometimes I resent the system and this these paradigms and this economy and these governments and this shop so I kind of like feel like not being a part of it so it affects my motivation a lack of networking because I'm antisocial and I fucking hate everyone. It's really hard for me to network. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's true and sad. But, you know, that and I would say um, a bit of frustration with uh, my awareness of, 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 of the overall picture and shit, you know. Sometimes that can be a barrier in itself, you know, knowing things. But yeah, that was, that was my SWOT assessment. Oh, well, he missed out a lot, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I totally did. I really would love your fucking perspective on my SWAT, buddy. <laughs> Honestly, I would. You know what? Fuck it. It was SWAT you like a bug. I need a good kick in the nuts anyways. <laughs> well, first steel toes and kick me in the cunt. I think um, just one thing in terms of your languaging, where I think you have a strength of doing a critical analysis of what could go wrong. And that you're, you're, you seem to be looking at, every, like you're looking at things from a security officer point of view, right? And I think the, you also see, I mean, the, the ideal of what could happen, but the doubt, like there's, there's honest doubt about, you know, <laughs> with the limitations of humans. Um, I think it's almost like, I don't even think you should, I don't think that thinking should come in right now in the sense of, you need to sort of like, polish the pearl or, or it's like again when i said the equipment stuff like the stuff that you have to do are the hard stuff that aren't that isn't easy for you the stuff that you're good at is just going to come naturally you don't even have to worry about it yeah and so i think the fundamental details the logistical details of how that business is going to run from a numbers point of view so I think that part of your thinking has to switch into numbers and numbers have to be very, very important. And your weakness might be, you, you don't play with numbers a lot, enough. Yeah, I've allowed it to become a mental blockage and, and that's something I had intended to deal with. 
but I, like you said, you said focus mostly on this course and none other thing. So I was also going to take high school upgrading part time because this thing's only part time. And I figured by the two of them, I could, you know, work on some of my weaknesses around numbers and accounting and, and business kind of numbers whilst taking the course. But I kind of like your idea of just one thing at a time. And then when I'm done this and there's a lull in things, I can go to school. And work on that part, right? Like, have you ever worked with a spreadsheet? Kind of. Yeah, shit. As soon as you say that word, my sphincter goes. Meh. So yeah, yeah. Says, yeah. But, like I, like I would sort of like spend like a couple days. And you'll surprise yourself. Don't even do anything else, and just sit there with, with like kind of like a with a graph paper, pen and paper, and just start thinking about things. And it's, and it, and it's just basics. It's like, hey, we're gonna need trucks, we need fuel, we're gonna need fences, we're gonna need... What are all the things? Logistics and stuff. What are the assets that we need? <clears throat> and how much is it gonna cost? And which is cyclical and which is one time? Yeah, like, are we gonna need that front? Oh, okay, professor, geez, we're a fucking minute here, fuck. <laughs> okay, what did you fucking say? <laughs> what, kind of like looking at the, of what do you need out front? Yeah. And then what are the, the cyclical numbers? And then, you know, just basics like, okay, we need a building. Okay, we need 25,000 square feet. Okay. Um, you know, it has electricity. It's going to cost this much. It has water. It's going to cost this much. Uh, we're going to need, um, let's say 20 food days times 360, let's say minimum 60 stacks of, uh, you know, 20 feet by four feet. Like just start to design your idea. Like if you had to design this and you knew nothing and you went, okay, I, I want, you know, 10 massive greenhouses per reserve. Here's the amount of reserves in Canada. You know how much food does each reserve create on its own? How much is how much do they need to create? How much food is wasted? How much food is the optimal goal for each person? Um, and then how long to become food self sufficient? Yeah. And then sort of go like, well, how many greenhouses? Like you have to remember, like, I'm not trying to solve human hunger. I'm not trying to solve all First Nations hunger. I'm trying to fill a need within a niche that's it's, it's available to me. The rest comes down the road. That if I get too big in my vision too soon, I'll lose my way. That if I stay focused on the one thing, just getting one greenhouse and showing that it can work. Once I know that myself and to everyone else that uh, James can do this, now I just need to convince a second reserve for a second greenhouse. Now we can start talking about this and that. But I need to really put my focus knowing how my brain works and just wrapping my head around the logistics of just getting this first motherfucker going and what the realistic numbers are when it comes to land, how much square footage, da -da -da, what's the cost of the system if I were to get someone else to set it up, how much do experts cost, water lines, utilities, like that kind of shit. Like yeah. that would be more to me in line with what I'm trying to do than to go too big too soon. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and look too far down the road. Yeah, so, no, agreed. I'm just sort of like saying that like, what you told me about what you want to do is you want to put a franchise it. So you got to think in the larger numbers at the beginning a bit. Like you're making one McDonald's, but you're, you're looking at doing 100 McDonald's. Yeah. So, yeah, but when McDonald's started, he didn't think of it that way. He I'll just bet you he did. One store, and he I'll did. I bet you he did. <clears throat> he saw how it took off, and then he went all like big screen when he franchised. I wonder, because maybe I had a dream, like IBM, when that started, whoever started IBM, they had the idea it was going to grow into that IBM size. And to me, just the way you think is that you do have that big vision. You have told me about it. And, and I, I know, but that, remember we were talking about the mental health stuff and all that shit. I think sometimes the, the ability to, to separate your vision from how to get the vision started. Yeah. You know, like that, just like anything you need to, to get that, like they stumble those who run too fast, right? That that old Shakespearean thing. Yeah. So by taking it at one step at a time in the beginning and just get an, a something going. It's like when you go camping with someone. 
and your buddy talks about it. He's a great camper and a great camper and a great camper. You show up to this campsite. It's rainy. It's windy. You're setting up your tent. You're like, hey, let's get some coffee going. And from all his talk and talk and talk, he can't 15 minutes later, half an hour later, produce a fucking fire. You know what I mean? Like for all his talk, you couldn't even make one fire go. And so that's kind of what I want to do. Once I can prove to everyone, see, I can do this one thing. There's a potential to do so much more, you guys. I got it. I got it. You don't have to beat these guys with that one. Hey, man, that's the seller, bro. Dude. Lord of the lead, Lord of the lead balloon. <laughs> what? Holy fuck! What the hell? Hey, clean job today. I wasn't in. I just came home what? and I was like, "Holy shit!" Really? Was, no. She so, was out all day. It was me. Okay. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Don't give me credit. <laughs> I took out the bottles and did the recycling and all that stuff. Their oh. dishes vacuuming, just vacuuming the walls. No Thank you so much. I figured you'd appreciate it after a long day of work. $2,700. Oh, no, okay, so I'm on a Zoom call. I'll be with you shortly. Sorry. And I love you with all my There's cold, dead heart. <clears throat> yes. Is that your last question? Do you have any more? Can I yes. Thank you. Any more? Okay. Well, maybe we're at the we're at the end here. Yeah. I will continue to stay touching you with you. I'll let you know how that Wednesday conversation goes with this guy because he's 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 Canadian. He's national wide networking. He runs his his particular aspect of business programs through universities across Canada. Uh huh. He's Abenaki and from Quebec. And he's like super university educated, blah, blah, blah. But he's a consultant for business schools. And so that's what he does, especially specializing in First Nations business stuff. So he's a, he asked me to talk to me on, on my own. So, uh, you know, I'm imagining some goodness might come out of that and, and you know, a sharpening of the vision and perspective. I'm, I'm willing to take any and all the help I can get because the end goal is we're just going to feed children and feed families. So... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I just, I hear a lot of, I mean, you're, you're being humble with this task and I think that's a very good way to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you'll get all the right information from all these people. And just, I, I would just say sort of have a, let's say a quiet confidence and perhaps like there are so many reasons why it can happen, but those can all be overcome and they have to be overcome in order for this to, to go ahead and, and you will do it. Yeah. And just to, Sort of focus on you know as you said step by step what, what has to happen and and kind of like really i think you do this like just embrace simplicity like what is the simplest way to get this going mm -hmm. and you know that that will that will chart the course in a good way i think mm -hmm. well, i was just thinking as you were talking in, in the nature of our relationship you were in many ways my mentor and i don't think i've ever called anyone that Life. so just in my way of seeing things and how i feel about our connection and relationship i feel like in some ways in this paradigm especially you're my mentor so your words carry a lot more weight than almost anyone else so you know you're on par with the instruction of this course so i can take what you say heavily <laughs> well i'll uh, I get stoned and forget everything you said but that's not important remember to get the manual it's uh It'll, it'll, I mean, uh, the title just so I can look for it when I'm at uh, Monroe's or some. The title, yeah, of the manual, yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, Gene Keys, yeah, yeah, Gene Keys. Okay, Gene Keys. Okay, yeah. no, I was also thinking you the, the the manual for your uh, oh, right, just get the damn tabs and I'm I put paper in the binder, I put the dividers, then put the little paper, the little nibby things in them, so because it's all inflow matrix is file folder structure, basically, right? So I'm good. I actually have a listen oh. file folder, so I can actually fill this fucker with files. Ah, oh, very nice. Fill this fucker with files. See, alliteration. Love it. Okay, peace. Alota, alota.